foolproof. I, I don't know how anybody can argue play to play to play how you're not getting the most out of a player. You're you're paying a lot of money to look at the money that the Packers are basically pissing away here in Jair Alexander, David Bakhtiari. Granted, these are all different situations with his knee. He's, I believe, the fourth highest paid offensive lineman in the NFL. Aaron Rodgers is dead money. What is it, $40 million? It's a lot of money to a lot of players, giving you not a lot this year. So, again, not to bring everything back to Jordan Love, I, I think there's a lot going on around this young quarterback. Out of his control, no excuses, but to be at 7-8 and eight with the numbers he has, impressive. Okay, yeah. You know, but as, as you're kind of describing J.R. Alexander's game against the Panthers, Bob. You know what I was thinking of here is being a kid here in Western New York, watching those mid-90s Packer teams. Craig Newsom, Doug Evans. I know it was a different game. You could do a hell of a lot more defensive back than you can today. Can you see those guys ever loafing? Never. I don't remember Newsom. Lo Man, he, he probably had a fraction of Jair Alexander's like athleticism and raw talent. But you got a hell of a lot more out of a Craig Newsom and a Doug Evans than you got out of Jair Alexander right now. Um, even take it to, to to recent teams. Mike McKenzie, yeah, he wanted more money at one point, and that was a whole thing that you covered it all with Mike Sherman. Um, he made plays. He stepped up. He battled. Al Harris, obviously. Tremont Williams, the, the ultimate pros, pro, undrafted, fought for every inch in the NFL. It just... It, it, it's a really it, it sends such a bad message to your team and when you pay a guy like this and you're not getting much out of him when his effort is clearly low remember he's ripping the offense earlier the season hey i guess we got to score touchdowns on defense for us to win games basically paraphrasing mm -hmm. here um mm -hmm. kind of subtle shots at the offense and he you know he's hurt and then he returned because he's got Devonte adams as a matchup and then he's missing more time granted injuries it's hard to get inside of somebody's head but he hasn't necessarily been trying to to play through it, maybe like those aforementioned corners would, which you pay somebody. I think that there is this understanding, like, we want to get the most out of you now. I think I do have a slight disagreement, though, I on the statement from Brian Gudikins. Um, yeah, it's that makes a lot of sense in terms of how you put it. Like, why would you feel the need to coddle him um, when you're trying to send send a statement to your team, you probably didn't need to, to say that. To me, though, the actions speak loudly. And I think this is 100% the co correct decision by the Green Bay Packers to suspend Jair Alexander for this. And let's not remember where this organization was just last year, the year before, when a certain star player named Aaron Rodgers had carte blanche to do whatever the hell he wanted. Right? I mean, he's... Again, I don't want to go down the COVID road. Do whatever the hell you want with the vaccine. I don't care. But clearly, he wanted the world to think he was vaccinated and he contract he gets COVID, secrets out, and it turns out he was doing all these press conferences without the mask as the Lamar Jacksons and the Carson Wentz's and the Kirk Cousins, you know, they weren't afraid to stand by their decision to not get vaccinated and they took a lot of shit from a lot of people. And then Aaron, he gets caught, and okay, I guess I'll go full heel on Pat McAfee and just rip away. It's as he's kind of walking through the hallways, doing whatever. That's just one example of the team letting Aaron Rodgers do whatever he wanted, bringing back Randall Cobb. You know, get, get, the Jets are doing it now. I don't, and, and by the way, his talent has dwindled. His athleticism has dwindled. He has not done anything in the offseason. And at no point did Brian Gutekinds and Matt LaFleur really ball up a fist, slam the table, and say, enough's enough. You can't you can't do this. And that, I remember writing a column during that summer of 2021 when he was holding the team hostage and putting out there through allies that Brian Gutekinds needed to be fired to, for him to return. So I forget that. That wasn't necessarily denied. The GM needs to be fired for me to play football again. And this dragged on for months. And then Matt LaFleur is at a podium, kowtowing and being emotional and begging and pleading and just, oh, we need Aaron back. We, and I, I wrote then, like, you run the risk of sending a pretty terrible message to the other 52, in that case, 89 players in that locker room if you're just going to bend over backwards at every turn. 
for a player. This is coming from somebody who is unabashedly pro player too, and probably to a fault. But you got to draw a line somewhere. They never drew it with Aaron Rodgers. They're drawing one now with Jair Alexander. So, yeah, I get it. Nationally, you've got uh, Pat McAfee. Oh, here's a shock. Pat McAfee's taking a shot at the Packers management. I'll, I'll be damned. I wonder why that is. Here's what McAfee said, Bob. Quote, it's not a movie. This is real life right now for the Green Bay Packers, who are still very much in playoff contention. And he's got J.J. Watt on. And J.J. Watt, he says, this is great. So outlandish that I have respect for it in terms of Alexander just going out there for the coin toss. Quote, that is a big baller move. That's an alpha. He's like, hey, I got this. Having gone out for a lot of coin tosses, I'm trying to picture it. And there's A.J. Hawk right there, former Packer. He says, quote, doesn't a suspension seem like a lot, though? Darius Butler, he's on the show. Quote, there's too much on the line. Um, I mean, you've got a lot of players, a lot of people. I'd say it's divided. I think a lot of, to the credit of a lot of Packer fans, um, from what I could gauge, um, they said this, this, they they believe this had to have been done. Like you do need to remember this is a team and you have standards. And as Leroy Butler said last off season, right? That G, that, 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 that G that you see on the set helmet, that always is going to persevere through anything. So I get it. Maybe Gudikins didn't need to, you know, um, hold Jair Alexander's proverbial hand through the court of public opinion. That w- this, this was a great opportunity for a one-sentence statement, if anything, to suspend him. Uh, but they did it. They did it, right? They, in, in the biggest game of the year. And uh, it, I think it does send a really good message. We'll see how much they miss him. You don't think they'll miss him much at all? You're, you're probably right. I mean, what has he really given you this year? 